We are back here at the Brea Group Stadium for another episode of the Yo Show, and I'm currently sitting in a new look like an Orient tunnel, looking good. But anyway, let's get started with the show. We have got another jam-packed episode in store for you today. We're going to be chatting to the cast of The Greater Game and seeing what they've been up to, as well as looking towards Saturday's game against Haven and Waterlooville. I can't wait. Here we go. I am sat here now in the Leighton Orient dugout, and I'm going to be honest with you, they're not looking too shiny, Pavit. I think need to come back and give them another once over. Now, I'm sat in Edinburgh's chair. Let's hear what he has to say about Saturday's game against Haven and Waterlooville. Justin, how's the week been for you and the boys so far? Well, we, I think obviously uh, Monday we came in, regrouped, we spoke about the, the defeat at Maystone uh, on Saturday, um, but quickly over that and, and looking forward to, to getting back to league action on, on Saturday. And as you said, we, we get back to league action on Saturday, it's the visit of Haven and Waterlooville, who have been struggling for form, but it, it, it's about approaching the game in the, in the right manner, isn't it? Yeah, no, we've had a, um, a free week as such of no midweek game, so we've had real good preparation for it. Um, always say, wherever ever team you come up against, it's always going to be a difficult encounter and, and it always have its own um, difficulties within the game. Uh, having it will come, um, you know, they'll, they'll be looking for a response. The managers questioned the players uh, for their performance and the result that they had at the weekend against Met Police. So. We know they'll be coming to, to put on a performance and, and try and get a result. You know, I think their league position is a, is a low one, but you know, I think if you look at all of their results, they've only been by the odd goal that they've, they've lost. So you know, we have to be at our best, um, and, and I, I expect us that we'll, um, you know, with our home fans getting behind us, that you know, we look back to trying to get back to winning ways. So, as you might be able to hear, they're rehearsing for the greater game in the old dressing room in the East stand. We're going to go and have a chat with them and hear about how they've been getting on the rehearsal so far. Right, so here I am in the old Lady Norwich dressing room with Stephen Bush and Mike Head. Stephen? Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, mate. Nice to meet you. Um, so you guys are here. You've been here for how long now? A few weeks? For this is the, the back end of our second week. Okay. So yeah, we feel part of the furniture now. Yeah? So yeah, it's been really nice. And how are rehearsals going for the both of you? Yeah, brilliantly, brilliantly. We, we're working quickly, obviously only a two week rehearsal period, but we've, we've crammed a lot in in a short space of time okay. and um, we, we, we've got a really good shape now. It's just yeah. tech and sorting out all the, but they're yeah, going brilliantly. Yeah, all, everyone's been great. The trick to it is, we've, uh, I'm staying off camera, weren't we? The trick to most car plays to casting and the cast are absolutely superb. They're not only good actors, they're very well suited to the roles that they're playing. So they brought such an energy to it and we've got like a multi award winning stage director. So he's pieced everything together. So that's been a rush. Everything's fallen into place. Everyone's got a real good buzz about it. So yeah, everything's been really positive. So I'm now here with James Phelps and Scott Kyle. James, how you doing? Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Um, so you guys are in the great game. It's opening next Tuesday. Tell us who are you guys playing? Uh, yeah, so I'm playing uh, Richard McFadden. Yeah. Uh, which I'm really, really excited about. Yeah. And I'm playing George Scott. Yeah, yeah. And, and obviously Richard McFadden's a pretty uh, meaty character. We, yeah. we had a chat with um, Stephen about the letter that got sent home from, uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Tell, tell us about, that must be, yeah, it must be hard to play. It is, to be honest, it's one of the first times I've played a real person um, okay. of, of significance. So, the Weasleys aren't real? Well, they start, I don't Yeah, so it's, it's, what's been really quite cool is that we've, all without, we, we've never even spoke to, any of the cast members, uh, the rest of the cast, until our first day. Yeah. But we'd all, on our own backs, just done as much research as we possibly could into yeah. the characters, their history, even down to, I actually went up to Blythe, where he was from, okay. just to try and get the accent a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was really interesting. And then when you come here, like you see like this building named after Richard McFadden, there is. building named after Scott. And, and his artwork up around the, the, the yeah, ground. So he's, 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 it's great that he's still remembered. Mm. So Mike, you are, I think I'm right in saying that you're the only member of cast 
that was in the original yes. a couple of years back. How are things shaping up differently? Well, to... it's like, I mean, obviously I wrote it. So okay. being the writer, I put myself in it, you know. I'm Unbel like, James Corden, but I don't support such a rubbish team. <laughs> and slightly thinner. But um, yeah, it's been brilliant. I mean, it's been lovely to do the process again yeah. and to, to recreate the role. Um, when I found out there was a guy called Jumbo, who was a footballer, who was overweight and skipped training, I thought, that's me. <laughs> and he's from Acne as well, so I thought, brilliant. <laughs> um, but to see it again with a new, completely new cast, a completely different director, and, and have a, like, a fresh look on it, it's sort of like... Um, I've fallen back in love with the play, back in love with the characters for a whole different reason. Mm. So although it's the same play um, and it's the same story, it's told in such a different way, in such a different perspective that it's completely fresh. So the, fan, so the fans that did see the first one a couple of years ago, can they expect something quite different, something new? Yeah, yeah, I mean obviously it's, it's been a couple of years so it's gone out, but it's, it's a new cast, it's a new look. Mm. And also, uh, I've said to a few of the fans, this is probably the last chance the play is ever going to go out. Mm. So, you know, I, I spoke to a couple of fans, I'll see it before, I'll see it again, you won't see it again. Yeah. This is either come now, or, you know, it is what it is. Um, but it is a different play, it's a different look, um, there's different moments in it that are okay. going to get people, there's different moments that are going to get people laughing. So, um, you know, my honest opinion is, if you're an Orient fan, this is, this is your history, it's an amazing piece of history. And it's something that you've, you know, really, let's, let's send it out with a bang. Mm. And, and your character, can you... Yeah, I'm playing George Scott, mm. and so obviously George played for the O's, and he uh, was one of the 41 that volunteered to go and fight uh, yeah. in the First World War. Um, George, unfortunately, was um, captured by the Germans, um, and he was tortured, um, and obviously passed away, unfortunately. Oh, I didn't actually realise he was yeah, captured. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so the the great thing with, with the, sh the show is we're rehearsing inside the stadium. Yeah. So we're actually in one of the old dressing rooms. So there's a lot of things that we're, we're picking up on the banter, the close proximity, yeah. um, which is really nice. And uh, and I was saying to the guys, I'm, I'm fortunate enough I'm down uh, for six weeks. I'm staying in the army barracks in well, Willich. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's with the king's troop, so I'm staying away. Feeling um, like a rat, son. Yeah, <laughs> so it's really funny because during the day you're kind of literally living and breathing in the dressing room, and at night time you're going home, and I'm, I'm you know, I've got, uh, I've Real soldier inside the house. Oh, they're showing you all the kit. You don't get to see all the, all the modern kit and they're having a, having a go at some of the stuff I'm wearing and stuff like that. So, you know, I'd get you a better hat than that. It must, it must be pretty intense then in the rehearsal period um, so far. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's, been, it's been good. What James was saying there about the responsibility when someone says to you, you're going to be playing this iconic person, you know, kind of real, a uh, true life. And it's in the hearts of some fans yeah. as well. And, and it's going to be, you know, kind of in the hometown of the ground. It's, yeah, it's, it's, um, a big, big pressure, but at the same time, I mean, what a fantastic opportunity to come in and, and tell an incredible story, mm. do you know what I mean? So, so yeah, it's a blessing to be here. Kent come in on Monday, mm. he was here for He's 15 brilliant. minutes, oh. little knock at the door, okay. and all of a sudden, this, you know, this, this guy walks in. Yeehaw, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, He's you know what I mean? His energy's in and, 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 and obviously a few people didn't know the club, like, oh, this, oh, I'm the majority shareholder. You I just wanted you all to know that the significance of what you're doing, we will have kids and shirts that will tie this all in together. So it's fantastic that it's happening this year. So again, I look forward to you guys getting it right. If you can't get it right, please do it right the last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we ain't right by so it, it should be all right, right. Yeah. 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 right. You should be, you should be right. Right. Yeah. But I can understand you're like, last night, ah, it's <laughs> over. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. You wouldn't get okay, that yeah. at another club. And I think that's, it, first it's nice for us to see the club and feel fall in love with the club and the people that this story is for. Yeah. And secondly, for me, it's nice because I've seen a club that I'm in love with be treated so badly mm. and to be so disconnected to a club now that you could. I, I honestly don't think you could find a club that is more in touch with its with its fans, with its community. Like the, the launch of the new fourth kit, the fans have been crying out for that for, for ages. Mm -hmm. And the new the new board have gone right. This is what we're going to do. This is a. It's the right thing to do. And b. It's what the fans want. And it's such a it's a one eighty turnaround. And it's it, for an outsider to see that it makes you smile and it makes you you know, feel even closer to the club than, than what, we, what we did before. So we are going to take a look at your social media and in particular your reaction to the fourth kit that was released last week and it's fair to say that it's been all positive. Up first uh, is at Stephen Orient. He's put, so proud of our club. Bowing down to the National League seemed like the end of the world at the time, but with new owners and fans sticking together, the club has got its spirit and togetherness back and you are so right, Stephen. There is such a feel-good factor about the place. And this commemorative kit really does sum up all the brilliant things that are happening on and off the pitch at the moment. Up next we have at Leighton Eaus. I think I'll just call you PF. 
Um, PF has put commemorative shirt, ordered, tick. Great, again, tickets, ordered, tick. Off work for Bromley game, in progress. Well, good luck in getting that game off, please. Please be here, Pete, please. <laughs> uh, up next, we have at Patrick One Flood, who said, brilliant idea and well done for all involved. Having been on the Orient Sum Tour, I know what these shirts mean to the history and sacrifice of the players that were lost up the O's. And I think Kent summarised it beautifully in his interview after this shirt was released. It is so fantastic how proud of our history we are. Now, the kits were released this week and many fans have got them delivered in time for Saturday's game. Let's have a look at some of them wearing it. So up first we have at Paul WE underscore UK, Darth Paul. There's a picture there of him wearing the new shirt and he just put, love it. And he's looking very, quite serious, but quite dashing at the same time. Um, and also at Alan Keith 82 Any relation to Joe? Who knows? He's put, look what came today. Can't wait to see the team in this on the 17th. And neither can I. I'm really looking forward to seeing us wear it when we take on Bromley, when it's actually also our next football for a fiver game. See you there. That is it for another episode of The O Show. Thank you very much for joining me. Also, a massive thank you to the cast of The Greater Game, which is opening on Tuesday, so make sure you get your tickets if you don't have them already. Now, on to Saturday when we take on Haven and Waterlooville. Make sure you get your tickets for that as well. I'll see you there. Come on, you O's.